So the next one is communication. Communication is a very important skill. I say skill because you can learn it and it grows. You can improve upon it. Communication is important in our relationship. Do you agree? Yeah. Um, I think it's good for the kids to see us talking. Mm-hmm. And I think it's good for us to talk to the kids. Mm-hmm. Um, and just talk as a family, right? Like, yes. I think one thing that we... It's hard. That That's the reality of it. It's hard. But we try to do a device-free dinner. Yes. Um, and, you know, right now with little ones, it's hard because they want to be in front of the TV or the tablet or sometimes like we'll feed the kids before we eat just because they're hungry and you know, they don't want to wait. Hello. I'm Tijani Musa and I'm Yasmin Musa and this is how we're doing it. Welcome to how we're doing it here. We share stories about our journey and experiences of being first generation college graduates, our family, buying our first home, moving across the country and living a debt free lifestyle. We do so in an authentic, fun, and educational way to help other first-generation immigrants with similar paths. So, today is an important day, right? It is. So, what are we talking about today? Today, we're talking about family values. All right, all right. (laughs) Family values. And this is why you need to listen to this, because when you start making, we're assuming you have a partner and you're considering adding more people to your family, like having kids or adopting or you're raising family members' kids. So these are the things that you want to impart or teach these kids as they grow up and they, when they start going to school or they start interacting outside of the house, they can be like, These are the family values that we grew up in. These are the things that my parents taught me. And so these are the things we're about to discuss. Yasmin and I are going to have a conversation about our family values and um, and then uh, why we came up with these family values and how we're going to teach our kids these family values. And so hopefully you would be able to gain something from this conversation And then use it to come up with your family values. So before we go ahead and start the conversation, Yasmin, when you hear about core family values, what comes to mind? Those things that are important to you as a person and then things that you and I discussed as a couple that are important to us that we want our children to learn, that we want them, that we want to demonstrate to them, right? Because... Um, it's one thing to say it, but it's another thing to act yep. and live up to whatever that value is, right? So yep. our, some so things that we want to demonstrate to them, the values that we want to instill in them mm-hmm. that they can carry on as they become adults. Yep. Lead by example. Exactly. And uh, for me, when I think about family values or core values, these are things that manifest or show up on your daily life, right? These are things that manifest or show up in your daily life. So this is basically how you live your day-to-day life. That's what it means when we talk about family values. So what's the first one? We're not discussing this in any particular order. We're just in general talking about our family values. What's the first one that you have? We have five um, and The first one that we have is service. And Mm -hmm. like you said, it's not in any particular order. Um, But service is one that's very important to us because we like to give back to the community. That's something that you and I have done before we even met, you know. And then after meeting, you know, it's something that we like to do together, give back to our community. And giving back not just some, you know, yes, you can do like financially, you know, right. when you have the means to do that, but also giving back your time, yep. giving back your talent yep. um, to an organization that you, you know, h- highly believe in um, or, you know, anything that aligns with something that you're interested about or something that you're really passionate about. My passion lines in special education. Right. That is my thing. 
I love anything that has to do with special education. And so a lot of times that's what I bring to the table, right? Like I'm very passionate about this and I like educating others on special education and mm-hmm. on working with kids with disabilities and Braille specifically. Like Braille is, anytime I say Braille, my face just lights up mm-hmm. and you can see it. And so, you know, to me, I can, I give back. That's how mm-hmm. right here, right now in our current state where we're living, I am in my district, the only Latina that speaks Spanish. Mm-hmm. And I am the only person, and we have a huge Latina population in the district that I work with. And oh, I am yeah. the only person that is able to communicate with these families yes. that are only Spanish speaking. And it, it's, it goes outside of work, I think. Like, right. it's not just what you're doing within work. I think it's also what you're doing outside because yes. I've had weekends where I've sacrificed time with you and the kids to go meet with the parent and teach her Braille mm-hmm. because she wants to learn to teach her kid. Right. And I've taken time out of my day to do that. And right. so I think, you know, through doing uh, something like this, for example, I'm showing my daughter that I can give back to my community as well. To me, it's very important that I make an impact in my Latino community, that I'm making a difference and that I'm helping at the end of the day, you know, my students and where my passion lies within that braille. Yeah. Speaking of giving back to the community, Yasmin is actually sick today. <laughs> But she 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 basically wanted to come to the studio and record this episode because she feels like she needs to come to the to the studio and record the episode for you, for the listeners, because she really strongly believes that she needs to give back. And doing so, she wants to record this episode because it's a very special episode for us. And so she's sick and she came to the uh, uh, studio and she is uh, drinking tea as we are recording this. And uh, that's just uh, another small way of giving back to the community. In this, in this, in this uh, particular instance, she's giving back to the, to the audience. And so I just wanted to highlight that. And speaking of uh, giving back to the community or, or service as a core value uh, for our family, in Rotary, uh, I'm a, ro- a Rotarian. Uh, Rotary is an international a volunteer uh, organization. Uh, well, it started as a business organization, but most people that join the Rotary are people that are uh, passionate about giving back to the community. And so in the Rotary, uh, we have a, a uh, our mantra is service above self. And so that's one of the reasons, actually that's the main reason why I became a Rotarian because of that mantra of service above self. And so we always talk about the three T's talent, treasure, and time. And if you don't, if you have time, sometimes you only have time. You can give time to your community. Sometimes you have the treasures, like uh, resources. You can give that to the community. Sometimes you have your talent. You can also uh, be in a position where you give back your talent to the community. And so volunteering, giving back to the community is very important to us. And when we, when we first moved to Dallas, uh, we didn't know anybody here. And MLK Day, the, the day that just passed a few days ago, uh, we actually were looking for places to volunteer around the Dallas area. We could not find any place. The, the, the one volunteer place that we, we found was already at capacity, so they couldn't accept any more volunteers. So what did we do? Yasmin and I and Jasmine, we picked up a trash bag from home. Uh, we went to the park where we take the kids. And we started cleaning up the parks, just the three of us. And so this is why and we talk about like uh, service above self or, or giving back. Uh, it's important to us and we find ways to, uh, to make sure that we teach that uh, to the kids by, an ex- by example. Uh, when we were in, uh, in Manassas, we remember the Rotary would bring uh, boxes to the house and we would pack food for people in need and then deliver them to different churches, different uh, faith-based communities and different communities uh, around um, uh, Virginia. So this is important. Remember what I said, this is something that manifests in your day to day. And so service is something that is important. It's something that we teach the kids at home. 
I think you you brought up the a good point of like involving the kids, right? Yes. Like the yes, they're young. Like Jasmine was one when we did MLK volunteering, but she was old enough, you know, that she's not going to understand what we were doing or why or any of that. But right. we have pictures for her to look back on right. when she's older to say, "Oh, this is something you know, it was important to Mama and Baba, and you've been involved in it as well since you were little." Yeah. And then also with Leo, for example, the other day I had a volunteer opportunity with my organization, my sorority Chi Epsilon Sigma, Mm -hmm. and he actually went with me to this volunteer opportunity. We were picking up trash. You know, we showed up. He at the moment, I don't think he saw what the value of it was, you know, but I in in, for me, I know that I'm years down the road i'm going to be able to say hey look like this is something that was important to me as your auntie and i involved you in it right and you know i hope that he remembers it as something that like hey i used to do that with my titi that's what he calls me titi right and i hope that you know it's something that he has a good memory of me right from that and and, and a smaller way to also instill service to kids is what you already do at home like sharing we there's a there's a phrase that people always say uh sharing is caring right so you teach your kids how to share their toys or share their snacks with with within the house or when they're at the park and and see that you know another kid is in the corner talk to those kids when they when when they go to school uh noticing that some kids are like uh sitting by themselves those type of things. You teach them how to be kind. And you teach them how to reach out to other people. You teach them how to share their snacks. You teach them how to share their toys. These are all part of uh, things that uh, they can grow up in. And then as they are growing up and developing, they will learn that this is part of service. And so at that age, that's what you teach them. As they grow older, you start bringing them to events. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So what's the next thing you want to discuss as the next one, the next value that we have on our list is faith. Okay. I mean, for us, that was something that was very important. Yes. You know, in in the foundation yes. of our relationship and yes. the foundation of our marriage. Yes. And so that was something that we really want to carry through to our children. Mm-hmm. Um. You know, in preparing ourselves for marriage, you and I talked about how religion was something that, we, you know, I, I was raised Catholic, you were raised Muslim. Yes. And religion was a value that was very important to you. Yes. And growing up, for me, religion wasn't something that my family had a lot of value in. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, we went to church on Easter, Christmas Day, for example. Mm-hmm. It wasn't something that... I think happened naturally. That was a part of our everyday lives. It was something that we did on special occasions. Mm -hmm. And so in preparation for marriage, you and I are discussing, okay, how do we want to raise our kids? Right. What, what, what religion are we going to raise them? Mm -hmm. What, um, what do we want them to grow up seeing? Right. And this is where, that was our biggest difference, you mm-hmm. remember? Yep. That was really our biggest difference in um, when talking about are we ready for marriage. Yeah. That was the one thing that we were like, oh, gosh, we need to make sure we agree on this because yeah. if not, it w- it this was might not deal, work out. Yeah, deal, bre- deal breaker. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's a huge one. Uh, faith is a huge uh, conversation. So that's why it's important to engage in that conversation earlier on in the relationship so that you understand and your partner understands where you stand so that if there are any um, discussions or compromises that need to be made, uh, you could do them earlier on. And so the faith conversation, because faith, politics, money, religion, well, religion is faith, politics, uh, lovemaking, finances, those are all core reasons why people end up divorcing in in marriages and so if you have the opportunity to discuss those earlier on or discuss them before you get married um it's definitely a plus and so 
these are some of the things that we talked about when we when we recorded an episode about marriage. We were discussing premarital counseling, and so these are some of the things that we discussed in that mm-hmm. counseling uh, session, uh, especially like religion and and our differences. Yeah, definitely. So fast forward, right? Like we are going into five years of marriage here in a couple months, mm-hmm. right? What does this value look like in our home? This value of faith. We prayed together. Yep. We, you know, we're both Muslim and right. uh, we have set times that we pray. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we try to do as many of those prayers as we can as a family yes. together. Yes. So, you know, whether it's before dinner, after dinner, whatever the time may be, mm-hmm. we're like, okay, let's go pray. And, you know, Jasmine comes to join us. Mm-hmm. Um, Leo comes to join us if yes. he's there as well. Right. Um, and there's been, you know, there's occasions where, yes, the kids are running around while you and I are praying. They're kids, you yes. know, but they're seeing us do it. Right. And I think we brought it up on one episode before, but there's been times where Jasmine has told you, Baba, let's go pray. Yes. Baba, pray. Yep. Yep, she drags us to prayer. Yeah, <laughs> she does. Yep, she drags she us. She asks for her hijab. Yep. Um, so she, you know, it's part of our religion. Woman, as women, we cover ourselves to present right. ourselves in front of God. Yes. And so she wears her little hijab. It's just for practice for her. Yep. Um, but she sees me put it on, and so she wants a hijab as well. Yes. And so she'll ask for her hijab, um, to wear, and I think it's a beautiful thing. It's it's amazing. It's amazing to have a family where you observe um, similar religion or similar faith. Um, it's just another way for you and your family to be together, um, and and it builds that family dynamic. It builds that togetherness, the love um, that you have for one another, and especially the love that you share for God. So, faith is an important aspect of our life, and it shows up daily yeah <clears throat> i mean even at nighttime when we're praying with jasmine we'll say a prayer to her right before bed and she started learning some of it yes now she's she she finishes it for us <laughs> yep yep at two years old yeah she's so. bright and then you know little things like when we get in the car and we're going somewhere mm-hmm. we'll say bismillah which can you give us the exact translation bismillah yeah it's Practically anything and everything that you're trying to do, you want to say Bismillah, which is in the name of God or in the name of Allah, I do this. And so that's the... So we say it when we get in the car to, you know, to be safe. Yes. To get to our destination safely. And we started saying it so much that now Leo says it too. Yep. Both of them. Yep. (laughs) We say it before we eat. You will hear them yep. say it too. Teach by example. Teach by example, yeah. And you know, Leo's with us, you know, temporarily. Um, and religion is, a, you know, his mom hasn't, you know, chosen for him what religion he'll be. Right. Um, she has a, She has also allowed us to expose him to Islam. Mm-hmm. And she has allowed my parents to expose him to Catholicism. Right. So... You know, he's a kid that's growing up with all types of religions. Yes. When he gets to an age where he's old enough to make a conscious choice, then, you know, inshallah, maybe he'll he'll, he'll, <laughs> do he'll, it. he'll lean towards Islam because yep. he'll remember Titi and Tijani yep. doing it. Yep. So the next one is communication. Communication is a very important skill. I say skill because you can learn it and it grows. You can improve upon it. Communication is important in our relationship. Do you agree? Yeah. Um, I think it's good for the kids to see us talking. Mm-hmm. And I think it's good for us to talk to the kids. Mm-hmm. Um, and just talk as a family, right? Like, yes. I think one thing that we... It's hard. That That's the reality of it. It's hard. But we try to do a device free dinner yes um and you know right now with little ones it's hard because they want to be in front of the tv or the tablet or sometimes like we'll feed the kids before we eat just because they're hungry and you know they don't want to wait 
And so sometimes, or they'll finish our food before we do. So it's easy to like pull out a device and put them in front of that, you know? Yes. But I think where I want to get to a point in our family is get to a point where dinner time is a time where we put all devices away and we just Mm -hmm. focus on eating and we're talking about our days and you and I do it right. Like we can communicate in full sentences, but you know, with Jasmine, she's so much smaller. She can't do that yet. Yes. And then with Leo, even though he is more verbal and can do it, it's hard to get stuff out of him sometimes, you know, we really have to drag it out Mm -hmm. and it's hard for him to want to put that device down. So, It's a struggle. It's a work in progress. <laughs> it's a work in progress, yeah. Yeah, but communication is important. Um, it's uh, We we pride our, our relationship over communication because it's how we express ourselves. It's how we carry ourselves. We try to share as much uh, information as we can to each other. Uh, we, try, we try to share our days, work, feelings, emotions, things that are happening around us with each other and uh be, just before we uh came to the studio and start recording you were sharing with me can you can you uh tell the the, the listeners the thing you were sharing about communication where you want to be in a place with your kids where they feel comfortable coming to you to discuss things rather yeah. than yeah yeah i saw it on it was either tiktok or instagram one of the two it was on social media but it was something along the lines of when my kid gets older, rather than them saying, oh, I can't tell mom, I'll be in trouble, they'll want to say, I have to tell my mom, she'll know what to do. Yep. And I think that can go with any parent, you know, like right. you want your kid to have that trust. You want your kid to be able to communicate with you. I think if you get to that point, shoot, <laughs> you, yeah. you, you, you made it. <laughs> yep, pretty much. Those are goals. Those are goals, yeah. You want your kid to, rather than fear you, you want them to open up to you. And another big thing that I've seen like recently is um, that push for having kids that love you and that want to spend time with you as adults. Mm-hmm. Oh, right? yeah. Oh, like, yeah. Yes. You know... I love my parents so much and I, you know, I know that when they were raising me, they were doing the best that they could at Mm -hmm. the time with the information they had, the resources that they had. Mm -hmm. And yes, you know, I've, I've had my difficulties, you know, I've had to go through therapy to fix certain things, um, certain traumas and experiences, but at the same time, I still love them. And I, both my sister and I, look for ways to be with our parents mm-hmm. we yep. are constantly no matter where we're at you know like my our parent my parents moved across the country just to be close to mm-hmm. us and the kids oh yeah and so i think that speaks volumes excuse me um and it's the same way for me you know i was even when we were living in false church and they were in manassas what 40 minutes away mm-hmm. you i what once a week I'd be like, I'm going to my mom's bye. <laughs> yep. I have an episode. I have an episode called <laughs> Living with Your In Laws. I will uh, be sharing that episode soon. Uh, we definitely, <laughs> I talked about living with your in laws and uh, the reason why we even decided to go live with my in laws. So, but I think, right, like looking at it at the perspective of my parents, I'm like, wow, like they made it. Mm-hmm. They, ha- they raised two successful women, they raised two daughters who love them who want to give back to them who want to be with them who want to bring the grandchildren around them like yeah to me that their life that's success that's success yeah and that's what i want for myself that's what i aspire to be and i want you know jasmine and leo and the, all of our future children to have that comfort mm-hmm. you know and to come home yep come home and want to be around us when we're old Yep, <laughs> the, the way you're saying it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, just to add on the communication piece, when it comes to like uh, teaching communication by example, is uh, especially with kids or maybe with anyone, you just have to listen more and speak less. That's the formula. 
when my wife is talking, I listen to her and speak less. That's why pe- most people would say you have two ears. That means you listen twice as much as you talk. You have one mouth. Mm-hmm. And so listen more. And when, when you're dealing with kids, validate their feelings and allow them to, to go through tantrums. If they are crying for a particular thing, allow them to cry. Give them the space, give them the time, and then you can come back and comfort them. If you're talking to them, allow them to talk, to explain themselves to you, even though most of the stories never make any sense, but you're giving them the space to talk and you listen to them and validate their feelings, listen to them, be empathetic, sympathize with them, understand where they're coming from, go with them where they are going. When I say go with them, I mean when they are telling you your stories, don't say that that doesn't make sense. Go with them, ask questions, let them explain their story to you. You will be fascinated the amount of things they will tell you that never made any sense. But it's amazing how long they can tell you that story. <laughs> Especially with toddlers. Is Leo a toddler? He's no, five. Leo's a Leo's a kindergartner. Yeah, he's five. He has stories. He's the, school age. Yep, school age. The stories make no sense. But I love hearing about them. <laughs> it makes my day. <laughs> All night. At the end of the day, when he tells you about his day, he has so much he wants to say. And you started limiting him. What did you start saying to him? I give him, because his stories, he only wants to tell me his stories when he's in bed. Yeah, because he wants to delay bed. Yeah, because he doesn't want to sleep. And so I just, hey, you have three questions. And then, but he does, he's smart enough. He doesn't want to ask the questions. He go beat around. Every time he breathes, that's one. (laughs) When he pauses, that's two. And then he breathed again. That's 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 three. I said that's it. <laughs> that's how we finished the story there in bedtime. There was one time I put him to bed, and man, he had me up there for a minute because he was you rapping fell for and it. rapping and rapping. Yep. And I didn't give him three. I gave him five. And I'm Ooh, like, oh, that's know. an hour. And then I wasn't thinking like every breath, you know, counts as one. You have to, yeah. cause yeah, cause. He's tricky. I got set up. <laughs> he's, he's tricky. <laughs> That's my fault then. I did not communicate that with you. Speaking of communication, I should have passed down the, the information it's to you. It's hard though. I have to admit though, with like children, the communication gets so much harder because you and I sometimes, yes, we're in the same house, but we are doing different things. Oh yeah. Depending on the need of the kids, whether I'm cleaning or cooking or or, you know, you're doing dishes, like whatever the case might be, right? Like we're yes. busy doing our own thing, even though we're in the same house. Yes. And communication, unless we are purposeful about checking in with one another. You have to be intentional. And mm-hmm. being intentional. Yes, it doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. Yes. And we're in the same house. <laughs> so it's definitely something that that's why I call it a skill in the, in the beginning, because it's something you can improve on. And we pride ourselves in that, and we continue to improve on our communication. What's the next one you want to talk about? The next one is education. Oh, okay. <laughs> what do you want to say about education? Um, for me, growing up, education, I always knew education was the key to my success. Mm-hmm. And that's what I prioritized. At home, my parents raised me in an environment where they said, You do not have any responsibilities. Your only responsibility is to get good grades, go to school. That's it. Yes. Go to school, get good grades. And that was instilled in me. And I was a great student. I graduated high school, got a scholarship, three EIP, went to college. I didn't do very well my first semester, but after that, I got my act together. I even went to grad school. Yeah, I liked first, it so much. No, let's go back to first semester. <laughs> what, why didn't you do well? Were you partying or trying to understand no, neither, where you were at? Neither one of those. I okay. thought I was interested in a different field than what I ended ah, up gotcha. um, actually majoring in. Uh-huh. Um, and I just needed to really learn how to study. I didn't know how to study. That makes sense, yes. Like in high school, you know, a lot of times you study and then you, you play you don't really study like you play Jeopardy that yeah. has all the test questions. Yeah. And so you review like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. That doesn't really happen in college. <laughs> yeah. T- time management is different over there in college. Yeah. Educa- yeah. Education is important because for the reasons that you just mentioned, for me, education, I saw it as it's the only way. I have no other option but to get educated because 
I understand earlier on that if I want to sit at the table or if I want to create my own table, if I want to open my own doors, education is the way to go. And so I was not a technology person to create like an app like Facebook to become a billionaire. I was not in computer science, but I know that I was very passionate about education. And so I took that route. When I was in high school, I was involved in different sports. But but after high school, I learned right away that sports were not the way to go. And so I chose to go and be serious with my education. And so years down the road, you and I, you have a master's degree. I have a master's degree as well. And so this is why when we talk about core value and the reason why we have education is because, I mean, both of us, we value education. It's very important. And so we want to teach our kids also about education. Teaching your kids about education is different from forcing them to go to college. It's mm-hmm. different. We're going to tell them, hey, these are the routes or these are the path that we took. And this is why we value education. And education can come in different forms. College is one of them. Graduating from high school is one of them. But you can educate something about, you can educate about trade school, vocational uh, school. You can educate something about a job. You can educate something about a certificate or something like that. It comes in different forms. And whichever way that your kids shows more passion and ready to put in the work, you support them through that. Yeah. For me and you, is going to college and graduating from college and then going for a master's. It was diff- very different, right? Because we have that first generation mindset. Like right. We were the first ones that had the opportunity to do so. Exactly. And so we needed to capitalize on that. Yep. And uh, honestly, do it for our families. Like when yes. I graduated across that stage, my whole family graduated with me across that stage. Yes. Because my mom did not have those same opportunities. Neither did my dad. And after me, my sister's opportunities were like even two times what mine were right. because I had already been there, done that. Right, right. That's uh, the essence of us being first generation. We were, both of us were the first in the family to graduate at a four-year institution and then obviously the first in the family to go ahead and get a post-secondary uh, education as well. So we, <laughs> and we have an episode, I guess in our introductory episode, we talked briefly about this and what that means and what that looks like. And throughout our journey, throughout this podcast, we'll be talking about different phases of being a first gen and then sharing our story along the way. So this is just one aspect where we value education. For me, my brothers, my older brothers never had the opportunity to go to school. And so me going to school and excelling at school is a way of paying respect to my family and my older brothers because they didn't have that opportunity. Your mom as well. I remember at your undergrad graduation, you you put your mom in your cup, cap and gown. Oh, yeah. So cute. You have <laughs> the best photos. Yep. My mother, yeah. My mother was uh, thrilled and excited for me graduating. And so I had to, just like you said, when you graduated and you walk up that stage, your family is right behind you. And that's how I felt about my mom because she supported me through. Don't start crying on us. We ain't going to cry. <laughs> <laughs> What's the last uh, re- uh, 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 core value that we have? We, we're discussing five. Maybe we can do another, an extra, just a bonus. But what's the last one we have for our family? Responsibility. Responsibility. How do you see that uh, manifest in our day-to-day with the kids? Hmm. I think we instill in them that we each have like our own responsibilities. Like, for yeah. example, tonight... Leo was like, I don't want to go to school tomorrow. Right. And you said, you never hear me say, I don't want to go to work. I'm not going to work. Right. Exactly. (laughs) And you're like, we all have like our own responsibilities we have to do. We all have our own roles we play in this home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We we teach by example because I asked him, I said, have you ever seen me not wanting to go to work? He said, no. Have you ever seen Tete or Titi not wanting to go to work? He said, no, see, it's the same. Because if I don't go to work and I don't bring money home to take care of the house, you're not going to have a bed to sleep in. You're not going to have food to eat. And so just like you saying that your only responsibility when you were younger was to go to school and Mm -hmm. be a a great student, it's the same thing for you, uh, Leo. So we're going to go to school tomorrow. 
I know school. I haven't found anybody that is so passionate. I was passionate to go to school. I wanted to go to school. But you have to remember that you didn't have that opportunity. So you, yeah. and you were seeking it. So exactly. You were eager about it. It's very different for him. Yeah, yeah. Because he has the opportunity. He has the opportunity at a very young age. And so those are the things that when you have too many options, sometimes you don't value them. Mm-hmm. And so we have to teach him, you know, because I take my responsibility you take your responsibility seriously. We're teaching him how to be responsible as well, as well as Jasleen. You know, when it's time to eat dinner, everybody eats dinner together. That's part of being responsible. When you wake up in the morning, you brush your teeth, you go eat your breakfast and prepare yourself for school. When you come from school, take off your shoes, put them where you need to put them, take off your sweater. These are all different things that you can teach the kids. These are all captured in being a responsible person think of like a responsible citizen right like right I used, to, I used to teach third grade and we would talk about what makes a responsible citizen and what types of things right like right when you're outside in the streets you know not throwing trash yep if you see trash you can even pick it up you know like yep. little things like that like those are the things that you can instill in kids like for our kids Jasmine, for example, right now, she's obsessed with shoes. Oh, yeah. She has to have her shoes on at all times. Inclu- when she says all time, meaning all time, she wants to sleep with them. She wants to sleep with them. She wants to wear them around the house. So we've gotten to a point where we're like, okay, these shoes are for inside and these shoes are for outside. Yes. But she knows that when we're going upstairs, the shoes need to come off because you're going to sleep Mm -hmm. and we're not sleeping with the shoes. She likes to she likes to wear rain boots. That's the thing. She's not going to wear rain boots to sleep. That's her phase right now. Rain boots. Yes. When she wakes up in the morning, that's the first thing she asks you. Boots. 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 Yeah. So. She's learning that she needs to be responsible and leave the boots downstairs. Yes. And yeah, additionally, when we go to grandpa and grandma's house, she understands that as soon as she gets into the house, she needs to take off her shoes. And now she knows at two years old, when she, when she enters the house, she takes off the shoes and put them on the shoe rack. She understands that. And she does the same thing for her sweater. So these are things that you teach the kids. And this is, this is what we mean by, you know, teaching them when they're young. Teaching by example. Yep. <laughs> yep. All right. So now that we've discussed the five uh, core values, just a recap. Our core family values are service, faith, communication, education, and responsibility. Do you have any other core value that you think should have been on this list? We we kept it at five just because. It's an arbitrary number. It, it's for no reason. We just like the number five do you have any other that you think that could have been on this list i could think of one. Oh, i'm wondering if you have the same one as me so for us um i think traveling is important mm-hmm. but not in the sense of like oh we're traveling to like luxurious places like yes sure but that's right. not a value in itself right i don't think at this time for us, for me specifically, the value would be in traveling to our home countries, to yes. Sierra Leone and to right. Mexico, for our kids to see the mm-hmm. life of people there and yes. to learn to value the life that we have here. Right. Because I think that's what makes the biggest impact, right? You mm-hmm. and I grew up in our respective countries. Yeah. And everything that we've done has been driven by the fact that we saw poverty. Mm-hmm. Yep. We we, we experienced it. We lived we experienced it. Experienced it and uh-huh. lived it. Uh-huh. And so the least I feel like we can do for the kids is help them understand that aspect of life. Uh-huh. And by taking them to our countries, I really feel like we can do that. So that would be a value that I would like to I would have liked to add on there. Um yes. so I wouldn't call it traveling. I think I would focus it more on like going back to our homeland. Huh. Okay. I think the one that I was thinking about, but it also captures that it's family, Mm. just family, because you and I, we talk about family all the time. Even throughout this episode, we talk about how our family, we talk about education. So just family itself, which will capture our origins. Yeah, because we both still have family in our country. So, you know, I, I think, yeah. 
Yep. Family would be a good one. Family would have been one that we would add to this list because I it, think we it, can. There's <laughs> no such thing as it needs to be your top five. <laughs> okay. I guess officially we have a uh, six. We have family. We have family <laughs> because it's it's important. It's important to us. Yeah. We talk about it all the time. We live it. We see it. We want to teach the kids of it that the family, a nuclear family, the one that they live with and see every day, it's those are our family, but they have extended family members. They have uncles. They have aunts. They have cousins. They have nieces. They have uh, nephews. And those are extended family members that we also want them to be aware of and then also be exposed to because family is so dear to our heart. Absolutely. Yep. Anything else? Nope. That is it for me. All right. So, well, thank you. That was a awesome conversation. I love talking about core values. I got so excited and so amplified. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you for listening to another episode of How We're Doing It. We want to hear from you. Contact us at hwdipodcast at gmail.com or leave a comment. If you like the show, consider subscribing in order to get notified of new episodes. Thank you for listening and we'll see you again on the next episode. Kiss the mama. Bye-bye.